Adair Manor in County Limerick has just undergone one of the most extensive and lavish renovations ever undertaken in Ireland. As part of the renovation, which included the construction of 42 new bedrooms and a ballroom, a brand new set of kitchens has been created. And I've been invited behind the scenes to see a vital part of the hotel's operation. A part, of course, which the guests don't see. All the fruit and vegetables come into this room, uh, get sanitised, transferred from green crates, then to white crates. But you can see the detail like into the plums and so forth like that as well. They've already been sanitised and getting ready for the fruit baskets. So Nevin, this is where we prepare our fruit baskets uh, for the room. So every room will get a standard fruit basket. They look so colourful. They're the shiniest plums I've ever seen. They are indeed, and they're all done by hand, so they're all polished by hand as well. So it's, it's important to the detail as well. So Nevin, this is a completely separated area. So we fish on one side, and then on the opposite side we have the butchery. So you can see Colin here is preparing for tonight. So he's just working on pigeon and get that prepared uh, for tonight. And how many butchers would you have here? Well, we have two full-time, so one looks mainly after the butchery and then we have one on full-time prep on the fish preparation area as well. So everything is kept completely segregated. So next to the cold kitchen is our hot production kitchen. Uh -huh. So from here, we make all our own stocks. So you can see there's yes. already a stock on already today. Yeah. And this is a two day process. We roast our bones off and then we just add the liquor into it. And we reduce over two days. So it becomes the base of the stock for us. There's nothing better than making your own stock, is no. there? It's about recipes as well and having that consistency. So every stock when it's made should be exactly the same every time as well. This is the uh, cold kitchen. So all the production that's been done here is for the breakfast buffet in the morning. And you can see we're just preparing here for the afternoon tea as well. A lot of detail, a lot of precision. How many chefs now in the hotel? Um, at present we have about 42 chefs and that'll probably increase to about 52 um, going into peak season. And how many different kitchens do you have in the hotel? Six at the moment and we'll increase that to seven once the carriage house comes on board, which will be functioning from uh, March next year. So Nevin, this is the pastry bakery department. So you can see, um, we're just getting ready here for afternoon tea and preparing some financiers. A lot of the bread is being produced here. So we have a night shift on here at night time as well. They're doing the breads. So many bakers do you have here? Uh, we have four full-time bakers here. They work predominantly night shift and we have one during the day then to ensure that we get bread fresh for lunch and for dinner. And how many pastry chefs on top of that? Uh, pastry chefs, we have approximately about eight pastry chefs here at the moment and that will increase then according to the summer season. And how many bedrooms in the hotel? 104 bedrooms. 52 chefs yeah. for 102 bedrooms. Yeah. That's one chef per two rooms. I'm not complaining about the ratio, so that's as incredible. Long as we have the detail and consistency there but as it well. Is, and like, look at the work yeah. here. So this um, room is called the gallery. Originally uh, the gallery restaurant was actually a banqueting room. Due to the changes we've decided to use it as a breakfast element and also afternoon tea. We have a dedicated kitchen beside us here solely for the purpose of afternoon tea and breakfast. So this is one of your seven kitchens here behind us? That's correct, it's one of the seven kitchens. So there's one final kitchen that you need to see with Michael the chef from the Oak Room. I'm really looking forward to it and it's been such a fascinating journey seeing your amazing kitchens. Well done, thank you thank so you. much. Though. Michael, lovely to see you. Welcome. Welcome Absolutely to the crew. delighted to be in your kitchen. Ah, it's gorgeous. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, it is. A lovely kitchen, you know, we're it's very brand lucky. brand new. I'm so envious. I'm looking forward to seeing this quail dish. Yeah, so we're going to use the whole of the bird. And then we have some little fried quail egg. This is our herb puree. So in here we have shallots, reduced green, garlic puree. We have a bit of spinach, chervil, and tarragon. And then we just blend that up in the thermomix. mix. So and we have a nice, and this is just, yeah. So we have a nice, smooth puree, yeah. you know. It's kind of aniseed, is yeah. that the chervil? Yeah, exactly. It cuts through the richness of the dish, yeah. So I'll just go through the confit of the quail. So mm -hmm. what we've done is we've obviously salted them for six hours, washed them off, dried them, and then we confit them in sunflower oil and with some thyme and garlic just to get some more flavour into there. So then we have the quail, we took off the legs, took off the carcass, removed all the insides, season it, sous vide, uh, and then cook it in the water bath at 55 degrees. So then for service, what we'd normally do is we drop it back in at 50. If you want to drop that into the bath now. Put this, okay. Yeah. And there's one in here, will I take that yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, you can okay. take that one out. That one Perfect. can come out for resting. And how long do you cook this for? Uh, well, we, the first initial cooking is uh, 45 minutes. When we get a check on here, we, we drop it in straight away. 
So it's normally about 15 minutes to bring it back up to temperature. So now we're going to let it rest uh, for about five minutes. OK. In, in Give some butter and gut. Perfect. Whisk up the vinaigrette. So this is uh, an egg yolk vinaigrette. Here is raw egg yolks. We cook that in the water bath at 68 degrees. Okay. So you get sort of this texture here, a very thick cooked egg. So that's already cooked. So this is already cooked. You can see how thick it is. So we just add a splash of Chardonnay vinegar and just a pinch of salt. We also will need a tiny bit of water because obviously when you start whisking it, uh, it gets quite thick. So just yeah, give it a little whisk. Yeah. So I'm just gonna so, add a drop a little of drop course, of water. Of course, yeah, no problem. So, so we just whisk this. Would you like to try? I'd love to touch it there for us. Yeah. You couldn't get a bigger spoon. Oh, I'm no, joking. I could I'm probably joking. Get so it's quite rich, but it's, you know, the acidity there cuts through the richness. So we just leave this in, okay. in a little piping bag ready for service. So the next part of this dish is the barley. We fermented this barley in 3% salt solution. It enhances the flavor and it actually cooks it a lot quicker than traditional barley, which would take 20 minutes to cook. So this only takes five minutes to cook. So we cook this in a quail stock, traditionally called a remi, and it's made from the bones of the sauce. We have a jus gras here. In here is quail, chicken bones, onions, Veal stock and chicken stock, that's it. And tarragon, sorry, as well. We don't skim the fat off this sauce. The remi, we just literally, once we've made the sauce, we then top back up the water and bring it back to the boil. Cook it for another 45 minutes. That is so jelly. That's just the bones left over from Nothing the, else. That, that's just bones. So we'll cook the barley now, put it all in. So we take the quail stock. That's leave good. that to cook, so I'm just putting right. this on the back here. Lovely. Now the quail's rested. Take it out of its bag. But we're just going to give it another little season. Mm -hmm. Good hot pan. Crown side down first, okay. just let that tick over. And we can also drop the confit legs in. They're already cooked, so all we're doing is just browning them off now. So you can see the barley's now just okay, cooked that. So Nice brown colour on here. Beautiful. All right, so now we're just going to add a bit of butter. We'll just pull that off the heat a little bit. Yeah. And then we're just going to give it a little base in some foam and butter. Take the legs out. Just going to let that rest now. You can see the barley is just sort of you know, it's quite sticky. It's and quite... translucent, kind of, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that's looks from the fermentation. Wow. We have the little quail eggs that we fried off earlier. So we're just going to warm the quail sauce up. So I'm going to put a little bit of the barley in the ring. Just to give it a nice shape, is yeah, it? Yeah, just to give it a nice shape. Just lay the leg there. So we have the herb puree. That tasted amazing. Yeah. So we just keep, like I said, we just keep it really simple. Like that. And then we plate the egg yolk up next to it. So we're just going to take the quail off the crown now. Just follow down the backbone. So cooking it on the bone keeps it really moist. Yeah, it keeps the moisture in there. So we have the bird there. We just take off the wing. So we have a lovely little breast like that. Gorgeous. So we bring this over. So that sits on the barley nicely. Just finish this off with one of the quail eggs. Quail egg on top of that. With the quail sauce, a little bit over the egg. Not too much because it's quite strong. So we just finish off with a few sorrels. They've been foraged on the estate. That's our quail dish. That looks so, so clean, yeah, so beautiful. My favourite part is tasting it. The compi leg, such an amount of work in this, in the barley. It really balances itself out all together. That puree is delicious. I love the barley. Yeah, the quail is succulent well. and the crispy leg. Michael, thank you so much yeah, for having you. me in your kitchen. And I really wish you the very best of luck with your new venture. Thank you very much. Cheers.